sources into an MLA paper and how to do a, an in-text citation. So let's go ahead and begin. You're brought here to the main CTC website. The URL is very easy to remember. It's just www.ctcd.edu. If you come to the Academics tab at the top of the page and then scroll down to where it says More Resources, this will bring you to the library's main page. We're going to go and click on the Databases button here at the top. And you'll see on the databases page that we have a listing of various subject categories. And what you want to do is choose the subject category that's going to best match your resource uh, requirements. So I'm going to click on Business and Economics. And this will open up a listing of the databases. Now the library has added some new databases that you may want to be aware of. Uh, some of the new ones that we have are this one here, um, Business Entrepreneurship. Then we have Business Insights Global, uh, Business Source Complete, and then down here we have Regional Business News and Small Business Reference Center. Any of these will be good for marketing. The one I'm going to start with first is this one here, the Business Insights Global. Now the first time you log on to the databases, you're going to come to the online database login screen. The instructions for logging in are given here at the top. Your username will be a lowercase c followed by the first seven digits of your CTC ID number. Your password will be your first and last initials in capital letters, followed by your six-digit birth date. That's two-digit month, two-digit day, the last two digits of your birth year. So let me go ahead and log in. And this brings up uh, the database. Now, some of the things that you'll see in here are things like most searched companies, most used publications, topics. You'll notice there's a topic right here um, for marketing. So you can click on marketing and it'll show you that there are uh, academic journal articles, newspaper articles, research reports, reference materials, trade journal articles, case studies, magazine articles, and videos. Uh, now your professor may want you to use only newspaper articles or magazine articles. The trade journal articles, what those are, those are articles that are written by people in the industry for people in the industry. So if you're into say hotel management, um, you would be looking at hotel manager as a, um, a journal to look at. And these are written for a very specific type of audience. Now, if your professor has said that you need to have articles that are within, say, the last 30 to 60 days, you can come to where it says publication date and then put in a custom range and you just click on the box and it'll show you your month and year. So what I'm going to do is say take this back to maybe March and I'll click on the calendar for March 1st and then come here and then just click on today's date and then say apply. And this will narrow my article recovery, um, my article results uh, very nicely. Now I can also come here to my document type and say I want articles and tell it to apply. The other thing I can do is come here to where it says subjects and I have 
marketing. I can choose like electronic marketing, uh, target marketing, loyalty programs, um, global strategies. So I have all of these that I can choose from or maybe consumer behavior. And uh, you'll see like direct marketing, advertising. So I can choose any of these for my article review. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go and say email marketing and click on that. And you'll notice I have here nine articles that are from trade periodicals. I also have four from magazines and 53 from newspapers. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, I can come here and see maybe career opportunities in digital marketing, what you need to study and skills that you need. If I want to look at um, magazine articles, I can come on to here and then I can click on where it says view all the articles. I can also look at this one where it says full text documents and make sure that I've got all, all the articles will be full text and not a citation. So what I have now are maybe um, I can click on something like this. This is from Progressive Grocer. So if I was into something like the grocery business, I could look at this and um, you'll see the article. My keywords are highlighted here in orange. And down here at the bottom, you'll notice that it has the MLA citation. I can click on that to select it. I can copy it and then I can paste it directly into my document just like that. And <clears throat> I may need to do some fixing on it because I'm seeing that my uh, information is a little bit out of whack. Now some of the features that you'll see with this particular database um, I have up here the ability to translate the article. So if English is not an easy language for me to read, I can translate the article to any of a number of different um, languages. And this will give you a preview. This is in Russian. I can also complete the translation, in which case it will uh, do the rest of the article. If I click on cancel, that will take me back to my English. If I need the font a little bit bigger, I can increase the font size or I can decrease the font size if that makes it easier to read. Um, if you have visual problems like with um, your dyslexic or other reading issues, you can change the background uh, color so that maybe it's easier to read or you can change the font style so that maybe it's uh, easier or you can change your line spacing or the letter spacing so that it's easier for you to read or maybe the the word spacing. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can upload your article directly to uh, Google Drive or to OneDrive. You can email the article to yourself. You can download it or you can print it directly to your computer. Over here where it says Explore, you can find other articles on this particular topic or uh, related subjects. The uh, icons that you're seeing up here at the top, you have a site tool that allows you to change the citation style depending on your professor's requirements. Uh, some may have a professor that want the article citation to be in uh, an APA style. Be careful about APA because the rules for APA have changed in that only the first word of the title or the first word of the subtitle or proper nouns are capitalized. Everything else is lowercase. MLA 
it prefers it to be in what's called sentence case. So this is something that you do have. What is nice is that it will go and uh, italicize the name of the journal as well as the name of the database and give you the URL. Now Business Insights is good for doing company research. Uh, there is a companion database called Business Entrepreneurship and it's on the same platform as the previous one. And again, this is good for um, small businesses, entrepreneur type uh, material. And so what you can do, you can also come down here by browse for topic and uh, market research. So this is a way of doing marketing or market research for your company. And then you just click on marketing and you have what's called a topic overview page where you can read more about that particular topic and get a feeling for the different types of marketing. Uh, you also have, again, more like this, um, marketing strategy, marketing positions. If I go back to the previous page, I have the ability to search within my results. And again, I can do some limiting on what I need. Um, by the way, there are also videos here too. So you have newspapers, audio, you have websites. All of these are available. Um, if I come and decide I want maybe mass marketing, this is an encyclopedia article. I have business plans, e-marketing, but I want like magazines and journal articles. So I can come here and click on that and I can then go and say set my date range by very nicely coming here and go just three months. Click on March 1st on the calendar. Click on the two and click on today's date and then tell it to apply. And you'll notice that this has reduced the number of articles very nicely. I can also come here to subjects and do maybe um, uh, maybe consumer behavior and click on that and it tells me okay there is one article specifically on my topic. If I've gone too narrow I just click on that little X and it brings me back. If I want to um, say I'm looking at only article titles, I can click on um, article and you'll notice that I have information like this. So what I can do is I can click on this one and I've got maybe an article talking about uh, some research that's going to be done. And again, I have this information here. Now, this is an example of what's known as a, a corporate author. And so you may find something like this. So what I'm going to do is click on that and copy it and bring up my Word document and going to paste this in just like that and whoops let me go and do this again and bring this back like that and I'll show you how to fix this here in a bit but that's how you find things using those two article um, two databases uh, you also have the business source complete And what you want to do for this is scroll down here and make sure that the full text box is checked. And then over here where it says publish date, this is where you would put in your publication date. And if you just want to leave it to 2023, that's fine. 
And then up here, when you type in uh, marketing, you'll notice some type aheads that have happened, like marketing strategy, management, digital research, communication, plan. And so like this one here, if I click on marketing strategy, I can do this. And this will give me a bunch of articles, 119 articles. And then I can do something down here. I can come down here and select. Do I want trade publications or magazine articles? I'm going to go ahead and limit this to just um, magazines. And then within uh, my magazine's results, I can come down here to where it says subject thesaurus term and then click on show more. And this gives me an idea of some of the other um, subjects that I can limit what I'm looking at. For instance, market tightness. All right, I can go and click on that and say update. And this limits my results list very nicely. And sometimes you'll have all the same article. This one is actually several days worth of information. Again, if you think that maybe th uh, your article limit results were too limited, you can come back and clear uh, your limiter by just clicking on the little X. If you want to change it to, say, like the subjects, uh, and then tell it to show more, and then you can come down here and maybe see um, maybe anxiety. So you're able to do some uh, changes in your results. And then uh, this one is from Bloomberg again, and Bloomberg, I'm not seeing what I'm wanting, but sometimes you'll have a large article and sometimes you'll get a small article. If I click on this, this is, by the way, an HTML formatted article. This has the ability to um, have you listen to the article as well as translate. And this is... I believe, there we go. And sometimes this takes longer than others. There's the article in Russian. And I can go back to my original language very easily. Uh, what you can do with this is you can um, send it directly to Google Drive, to OneDrive, you can email the article. You have a citation tool as well. If you choose to email the article to yourself, uh, you would send it to a va any valid email address. And then down here where it says citation format, you just click on the drop down arrow and tell it. MLA 9th edition or whatever citation style your professor has wanted and then tell it to send and then just continue and what will show up eventually or not there it is and what you'll get will be article citation up here and then the article itself down there in the body. So this is something that you do have access to and what I will do with this is just add this to my works cited list. There we go. And so I have my information there. Okay, so that's three different article sources that I have 
And it's always a good idea to uh, eliminate the uh, red marks underneath people's names for the simple reason that way you don't have to worry about it later on. Okay, so that's how you find articles from the database. Now, if I come up here and go back to the library's main page, getting help from the library. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can come into the library and say, I need help. Uh, right up here where it says, ask a librarian, you have the ability to uh, send us an email that will allow you to put in any kind of a question. What our hours are, if you've got a source but you can't figure out how to get the citation, uh, send us the information and we'll try and figure that out for you. Uh, and then you just click on Submit. If I go back to the library's um, main page, you also have under About the Library, where it says contact us. Uh, you'll see our local phone number and our in and out of state toll free telephone numbers. You'll also see our direct email address as well. Uh, then another way of getting help is we do have a live chat and text chat feature these we try to monitor during the library's operating hours. Uh, the live chat, you just type in your question here, and within maybe a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, you should get an answer back from the library. You can also send us a text message from your phone at this number, 254-400-2275, and we'll respond back with a text message to your phone. Now, something that you may find very useful is the library does have a number of recorded seminars. And if I click on Research Study Guides and then type in the word Seminar and then tell it to search, it will give me a listing of the seminars. Now, this particular seminar is not yet listed because it's being recorded right now. That's why you don't see it. Later on when I revise this, yeah, you'll see this. So anyway, but you'll see a number of um, seminars that you can use and watch. Now we do have a couple of other services that you may find very useful. One is the Writing Center and its companion research paper review. Uh, the Writing Center, uh, this is a room within the library, it's room 105, and there are four uh, computer workstations in there. There are also two small study rooms, so if you want to do some group studying or you're working on a project, you have the ability to use those as well. Um, the uh, Writing Center also is where we do um, little workshops on how to do MLA and APA uh, style. There are also dictionaries, thesauri, as well as style manuals that you can use right there in the room. Now, the companion to the Writing Center is the research paper review. Research paper review is the library's uh, research paper review service. And what you would do is just email your final draft version of your paper to this email address, teaching.learning at ctcd.edu. And what you'll get back from the library will be two proofreading reports. One report will be a grammar report. We run your paper through Grammarly and it'll provide a listing of corrections that need to be done. The other report is a bubble comments report. And what you need to do is download the uh, bubble comments report and then when you open up the file, it will have in the right margin 
comments that the library staff has made uh, regarding readability flow logic. We also look at your in-text citations and source citations. And if we see something that we think needs correcting, we'll put a bubble comment on there. And then what you do is just click on the bubble. It highlights the area that needs correcting or um, adjusting. So that's how that works. Now, in the turnaround time for the research paper review, we do try to do it within 24 hours of our receiving the, uh, the paper. Uh, this is also true with questions that you email to us. We try to answer questions within 24 hours of our receiving the, the information through email. So you do have that. Now, another resource that we do have is actually under room reservation. And you will see <clears throat> here um, where you can schedule an appointment. And what you'll do is find a person's name. And for instance, you can come here and click on my name and then it will give you a calendar. You just click on a date and a time of when you want to have an appointment. And then, so if you go like this and then choose a time and then continue, you would put in your name and your email address and then click here on confirm appointment. And what this will do is it will send uh, an email to the selected person and it's a way of getting help one-on-one. -on -one. So there is that as well. I believe though they have changed things and right under the research study guides, you actually have a request for a seminar and appointment. So this uh, takes you to that same screen and then you can choose which of the librarians you wish to have an appointment with. And if you don't have any preference, it will choose uh, the first available person. And um, I believe the assumption is uh, that the appointment will be done in person. If you need to have a virtual appointment or seminar with a librarian, uh, you can send in that request through the um, Ask a Librarian feature as well. So that's how you have um, various help. Now let's go back to our paper. Now I've got three different items here. And you'll notice that they're already in Times New Roman size 12 font. Uh, but let's say for the sake of argument that they weren't and they came in a different font. What you can do is you can highlight the information and then do a right mouse click, come here to font, and then just tell it Times New Roman regular size 12 and then set it as your default font. And you can choose this document only or all documents based on the normal template and then say OK. Okay, that puts this into um, my Times New Roman size 12. Now, before I go and do any further information, uh, MLA indicates that you no longer need the access date if it has a publication date. So this one does, so the access date can be removed. And what I'm going to do is take all three of these off. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it in alphabetical order. So I'm going to go and highlight it. I'm just going to click and drag it into place. Like that. I see there's two periods here, so I'm going to get rid of one of the periods. And then the last thing I'm going to do I'll go and add that, is I'm going to highlight everything here and I'm doing a right mouse click. I'll come down here to paragraph and under special 
I'm going to choose hanging and I want this to be double spaced. And what this does is it puts this into a double spaced thingy here. All right, now I've got a blank line. There are no blank lines between my resources. So I can go like that. And now I have a works cited list that I can then use. And then what I'll do is come up here and center and just type in works cited. Oops, got a little misspelling here. There we go. And by the way, whether you have one or 101 sources in your list, uh, this is always plural. Um, and so you want to make sure that this says works cited. It's always out in the top line of the page. It is centered. It is not bolded. It is not italicized. It is not enclosed in quote marks. Then if I come up here, uh, what I'm going to do is just very briefly, I'm going to put in the header. I'm going to click on the insert tab and click on header. Choose the first blank and then come here to where it says page number. Choose top of page and then the right margin. And this is where I, I would put in my last name and hit the space bar once and then just close it. And because I set my font to default at Times New Roman size 12, the font in my header is also Times New Roman size 12. So I can click on that. Now I want to make sure that my line spacing is double. So I'm going to do that here at the top of the page. This will be where you put in your name, your professor's name, the course, um, identification. And that could be the course name or the course number and then the date. And then hit the enter key once, center, and type in the title of the paper. And the only words that are capitalized are significant words. Small words like of, the, a, and an. Basically anything that's a one or two letter word uh, with certain exceptions are lowercase. And then hit the enter key and return to left justification. Now the first line of each new um, paragraph should be indented one half inch in from the left margin. This is very easily done. You can use the tab key on your keyboard. It's set automatically for one half inch. But what you can also do, if you don't want to do that, you can do a right mouse click and come here to paragraph. And under special, use the first line feature and then say OK. That actually will move your typing cursor over. And when you begin typing, it will automatically indent for you. And then when you hit the Enter key, it starts a new paragraph, just like that. So that's how that works. And we'll just go ahead and put a few spaces in here just to make that easier. OK, so that's how you would set up your MLA paper. Now, in-text citations. In-text citations are used to show where you have referenced material from the sources that you've used. Um, now, this is done for any kind of resource material that you've quoted, paraphrased, summarized, or if you have statistical information. Anything that is not your original thought or that is not common knowledge must be cited. For instance, if I were to say the M&M candies are made with milk chocolate, that's pretty much common knowledge. But if I go and say that um, the red M&Ms have food dye number 59 to get that special red color, and that a special coating is used for 
the melt in your mouth, not in your hand feature that M&Ms are famous for. Well, how do I know that? Well, that's something I had from a source. And that's the test you can give yourself. If you write a sentence and it looks like something that maybe not everybody would know, ask yourself, how do I know this? If it came from a source, then you need to indicate where you got your source from. Now, what do in-text citations look like? Well, the most common one is what's called the parenthetical in-text citation. And basically that comes at the end of the sentence and before the period. So if I have something that is like this, my in-text citation is going to be right here. And then depending on what kind of a source I have, for instance, I have one here that has two authors. Um, what you'll use is the author's last names with the word and between them. So what I like to do, because I don't like typing, is I will go and just copy it and paste it up here. And then just take out the parts that I don't need. Now this particular article was an HTML article. And that means it didn't have any page numbers. And so what MLA says, when you don't have page numbers from the source, uh, then you don't worry about it. You just provide what you can. And you'll notice it gets its name parenthetical because it's inside the parentheses. And this would be how you would do two authors. Now occasionally you may want to use the author's names in the body of the sentence. And what you would do the first time is you would use the first and last names of the authors. And so you might have something that looks like this. And then we have our text and voila. There aren't any page numbers, so I don't include page numbers. The next time I use the same source will be just the author's last names. And I'm just going to go and take that. And so you can see what this looks like. And then I have maybe And then I have my information like this. So that's how an in-text citation will look. It'll look either what we call a narrative or um, it's either a narrative uh, in-text citation or a parenthetical in-textation. Um, you also have down here, something that looks like a corporate uh, in-text citation. And sometimes you'll have people that will go and don't really know what it is that they're, they're doing. Uh, and so they'll go and say, oh, European Outdoor Group. Um, what they've done is they've made the last word the last name of the organization. And so what you have to do <clears throat> in some cases is you have to go make some little changes like that. And in which case this would be up here. And when you have a corporate author, for instance like this one, that would be the in-text citation right there. You always take what information is at the left margin. Um, so what you can do is with this one here, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And again, this one was an HTML article. And it has this um, end page that indicates there weren't any pages uh, for that. So you do have that. And the narrative version of this would be, hang on a minute, it looks like we've lost our double spacing. There we go. The like that. Now, this third source that I have, this is a, a title. It does not have an author. Now, when you have an article that does not have a specific author, you don't go and use the title of the magazine. You don't use the editor. Uh, you don't go and try and find something. What MLA says is when you don't have an author, then you use the first one to three words of the title. And you'll notice this has quote marks. So your in-text citation will look like this. And we'll put this right here, parentheses, and then I'll put right like that, and then close quote, close parentheses, period. Now, if you have a title and you're using it in the narrative form of an in-text citation, what you may actually have to do is, I would suggest using the primary title. And so you just take that bit there and copy it. And then you'd put this, maybe according to you notice I don't have to go and say according to the article because uh, the quote marks indicate that this is an article that I'm citing. And so what I would have is this. So this is how you would do different types of in-text citations. Now, let us say, for the sake of argument, that this last one, uh, technology, did indeed have page numbers to it. Well, I can come here and right after my title, let's say it was on page 23. And then down here, this will look like this. So you can see what those look like very easily. So if you've got page numbers, you add the page numbers after either the author's name or after the title in the parentheticals. If you're using the narrative in-text citation, the page numbers, if you have it from the source, comes right at the end of the sentence and before the period. You don't have to go and put it in again. Okay, so that is um, it pretty much for how to format an MLA style paper uh, very quickly and easily with various examples. Now, if I come back to the main CTC uh, Libraries website, right here where it says Citation Resources, uh, you'll find the Purdue Online Writing Lab. And very quickly, uh, you can just come and click on MLA Guide, and then click on Formatting and Style Guide. And then this is where you'll see in-text citations, the basics. And this will show you how to do um, narrative as well as parenthetical in-text citations um, 
when you have a known author, a corporate author, no author, um, so you have stuff like this. Uh, and you'll notice that um, they kind of give preference to using the parenthetical in-text citations as opposed to having a narrative in-text citation. So this may be something that you want to think about. And then you have authors with the same last names, multiple authors, that sort of thing. Now, if I come back to the citation resources page, there is a quick style guide that you can click on. And I'll blow this up so it's a little easier to read. And this will show you the formatting and how to handle in-text citations, as well as um, handling narrative and parenthetical in-text citations. Uh, and then some basics on uh, the works cited information and the format. And it will give you the formula to follow as well as what that looks like. Okay, so um, that is what we have to offer for Marketing 1311. If you are uh, viewing this seminar for um, credit and you want to uh, make sure that you get it, you'll need to take the post-seminar survey. And uh, there will be an uh, email address that you will uh, put in a request for your post-seminar survey. Uh, when you request the recorded seminar, that will also be in the body of the message. So um, now you know how to find information from the library. You know how to put it together in an MLA style paper and you know where to find your information and get assistance. Okay, thank you very much for watching this seminar on uh, finding information for Marketing 1311.